Hello, thanks for joining for this lecture. Uh, in this lecture, we're going to talk about databases, uh, working with databases, performing operations on databases, your basic CRUD operations, create, read, update, delete types of operation on a database. And why is this important? Why is this lecture very important? Uh, because more often than not, companies will have their data in some form of a database. Uh, in the previous lectures, we showed how to create metadata connections to a database and how to do a simple load into a database. Uh, but the goal for this lecture is really to dive deeper into databases and to understand uh, a little bit more of the actions that you have under your tool belt uh, so that you're not only reading data from databases, but you can write data to databases, you can update the data if necessary, and you can perform a whole lot of actions. So uh, something very, very powerful. Uh, if you've worked uh, with databases in any form, this lecture would be something to really pay attention to as part of the ETO process or the data integration process. So we're gonna switch over back to the studio environment as always. And uh, we have a screen. We have uh, uh, here a simple job on the screen. I haven't connected anything yet. I'm going to do that in a little bit. But what we did earlier in the previous uh, lectures, you can maybe go back and watch those lectures around creating metadata, was we spent some time creating a metadata uh, connection for databases. And part of what we saw was, and I'm going to uh, open this up. This is what we did at the time. What we did was we created this connection to a MySQL environment. We specified the database. This is sitting on my local host. This could be anywhere. We test that. We see the connection is successful. Now we have the ability to read data and to write data to that MySQL environment. So I'm going to switch over here. This is the retailer DB. Uh, currently, we have uh, some tables here. Now I want to be able to um, write data to this table uh, in addition to reading it. But this lecture really focuses on the write part. Uh, how do we create tables in here, update those tables, delete them, uh, and all the CRUD operations that you can think about as you work with databases. So let's switch back over uh, to Studio. Uh, what we have coming in is my customer uh, file, which we created a connection already. I've brought that to the screen. And I've also brought in the, the, uh, the, the database connection as well. And all we need to do for that is simply just click in the connection, drag it into the screen. And in this case, I will be selecting output. So this is a database output before we use the uh, input. But in this case, I want to select output because we're going to be writing data to that connection. So that's what I have here. If I select on that component, you can see I have the T, uh, T output and it specifies it as MySQL. All my connections are looking good. And now I just need to connect them. So read this file. From here, connect that, write it to my database. Now, let's select the database component. We need to configure it uh, to tell it what exactly it's doing. So the first thing that we see, because we brought this on the repository, everything is filled for us from the repository. The one thing that we need to update is the table name, right? Because when we're writing that customer demo data into the database, we're going to be writing it to some table. So here, uh, I have given the name customer demo. Uh, that's what I want, uh, I want it to exist. Uh, the table name that I want in my database. And you can do this for any other database, right? It could be Oracle, it could be MySQL, it could be PostgreSQL, Snowflake, doesn't matter, right? We're still going to be performing the same types of actions. So now that I want this to be a customer uh, a demo table, let's take a look. Do I have a table in here called customer demo? No, right? So somehow we need to create uh, that table to make sure that it exists. And this is where talent comes into play. This is really the, the meat of this of this lecture. Uh, because even though that table doesn't exist, I can do certain actions on the table uh, on runtime. So here I can say, well, drop and create the table if it exists. Or create the table, or create table if it doesn't exist. Or if the table exists, drop and recreate it. right? Or clear the table, or truncate the table before you load. So all these actions will be performed on that table before the data are loads in there. The one that I'll be using here is create table if it doesn't exist. right? So if the table doesn't exist, we want to create it. So each time we run this job, it just checks. Does the table exist? If not, it creates the table. And how does it create the table? It creates the table based on the schema that we've provided that's coming in for our flow. So the table will have all these columns and the data types will be what we have defined in here. So very straightforward stuff. Now that we've created the table, what else do we want to do? 
we want to perform certain actions on that table we want to maybe insert the records insert update update uh, or insert delete replace or ignore so you have certain actions that you want to perform of course if you're doing an insert update you probably have to have a key on that table for which to key in for your updates as well but in this case i'm just going to do a basic insert if you wanted to do updates on that table you can write sql queries to do that but you know talent gives you the capability to do that uh, out of the box as well by using this these configurations and once you have that uh, we're ready to run our job and if we uh, run this job it should move uh, over the records from our local file into the database right now let's switch back over to mysql and take a look at what we have so if we go back to mysql let's close some of the things that i have on my screen here if i refresh this I should see a new table here called customer demo and that's what we just loaded and we can log in there and we can see the records have been brought over now I could do updates as we saw I could do a lot of other actions on this table uh, as part of the ETL process so it's more than just reading from tables we can also write to tables and have a lot more control over tables which is uh and databases which is what this lecture is really about i'm using my sql here as an example but if you're working with any other database the concepts uh still should be the same now one thing that i want to show too especially when working with tables is thinking about performance right where if you're loading millions and millions and millions of records it can take a very long time to write to tables and one of the things that we can do to solve that problem is we can look at the advanced settings here if you select that component there are more configurations that we have available for the table so for example uh, if you want to add additional JDBC parameters we can put that uh, in here right if you want to uh, the number of rows per insert so if you have a lot of rows and you want to say for each transaction that you're gonna insert uh, this is the number of rows that you want to uh, uh, insert per transaction and then commit every uh, uh, you know this is the amount of the time that you want to you know amount of records that you want to uh, insert before uh, you commit right and there are more properties here that you can set and use depending on what uh, your needs are uh, if you want to put additional columns you can definitely put those in there but you have some more fine grain uh, control over that uh, as well when working with databases so let's switch over here i think database is pretty straightforward just to recap we make sure we create our connection here in the databases uh, we can use that within the job and when working within the job well once when writing to a database we have more settings that we can control in terms of creating tables deleting tables inserting updating records and just for the list of databases that are available uh, if you come to the right side uh, these are the list of databases so what talent does is before it used to actually list out every single database now what you get is just this generic component say a tdb input when you bring that to the screen it's just generic right uh, and what you have to do is select the database type that you're working with let's say let's work with something different here let's find netiza for example oh, actually oracle oracle is very common let's do oracle so i select that i say i want to work with oracle Let's stick with Oracle. I apply that. Now it's configured everything to Oracle. I'm missing the drivers. I can install the driver for Oracle. Now all I need to do is sp specify my details to connect to the Oracle database and I can read uh, from there. So uh, and you can do that not just with Oracle, with any one of these uh, relational databases that are out there, you have the ability to read uh, from it. Redshift, or, you know, Amazon, Firebird, and you name it so really really uh, really key and there are times where you might you know one of the things that happens is you can create a generic uh, connection to a database and then use that connection within your flows uh, you can also do commits uh, you can do commit so you want to commit instead of just relying on the other commit we talked about you maybe want to commit uh, if you know the component is okay you want to commit if the comp uh, component is okay so there are there are uh, more flexibility fine grain uh, controls you might want to roll back transactions you might want to list get the list of tables you might want to get the list of columns within the tables so you have a lot of fine grain control uh, when working with databases you might want to see the last insert uh, id into a table you might want to do bulk output to tables uh, especially with things like oracle or sql server you might want to close the connection and so you might want to commit 
you have a lot of fine grain control uh you just simply go under the databases tab use one of the many components in there and you're really good uh, to go so i hope this lecture gives you some confidence to go out and start working with databases within talent uh regardless of what database your company uses right so that you can start accomplishing the projects you're hoping to accomplish uh within talent so let's switch over uh do a recap of what we've talked about and then set the stage for what is coming next so in this sec uh, lecture we talked about creating databases metadata uh, we talked about performing actions on databases we saw a lot of other components that are available for you to use uh, when working with databases now in the next lecture uh, we're going to switch things over we're going to talk about creating a master job what the master job is and when and where you should be using that uh, within your etr process so stay tuned for that